Hillary Clinton's famous 3 a.m. ad campaign. The strategy was simple and hardly new. Win votes by preying on emotions. But does it work? CNN's Randy Kay reports up close. The year was 1964. Lyndon Johnson was running for president against conservative Barry Goldwater when his campaign unleashed this. A little girl, a mushroom cloud, and a booming voice, warning the stakes were too high not to vote for Johnson, enough to scare the voters and help elect Johnson. He won by the widest margin in history. Fast forward more than 40 years and those same fear tactics are still playing out today. Have you noticed the candidates trying to scare you with attack ads? You may not like these ads, you may even think they don't work, but your brain knows better. Two wars, oil prices skyrocketing, and an economy in crisis. Emory University psychologist Drew Weston, author of The Political Brain, says fear-based attack ads are very effective because they reach the voters subconscious. Is the subconscious smarter than we think? Yes. To prove it, we asked Weston and his business partner, Joel Weinberger, to measure how this group of undecided voters responds to attack ads. Their company, ThinkScan.com, has developed software to probe the subconscious. The voters watch the ads, then identify the color of key words, like weak, inexperienced, or terrorist. If they hesitate, even for a thousandth of a second, it means the word had impact, and so did the ad. If the word is on their mind, if the word was activated, it will slow them down. Weston says that response time measures voters' subconscious feelings. Take Hillary Clinton's 3 a.m. ad, designed to make Barack Obama look inexperienced. It's 3 a.m., and your children are safe and asleep. That one, to me, was pandering and fear-mongering. Did it make you think Hillary Clinton is a stronger leader than Barack Obama? Not at all. It made me think that she's much more political than he is. In fact, no one in the group thought it made them doubt Obama, but it did. The group had the strongest associations with words like weak and lightweight, which Weston says means the ad made them question Obama's readiness, and they didn't even know it. Its purpose, too, is to make him seem like he's scary, like he's dangerous, like you need to be afraid if this guy's president. And, and I think that message unconsciously got through. Still not convinced? Watch what happened with this ad against John McCain. I don't think Americans are concerned if we're there for a hundred years or a thousand years or ten thousand years. A hundred years in Iraq, and you thought no one could be worse than George Bush. It got a thumbs down from our group, but Weston's data shows it left them feeling McCain has poor judgment and is too close to President Bush. When this test was given to a much larger group, 100 voters, the results were nearly identical. Why does this happen? Weston says the ads trigger a response in a part of our brain that experiences emotions. Still, Weston believes attack ads are risky. They can backfire. I think the attack ads kind of show the weakness of the candidate who's pushing the attack ad. So it looks like Hillary Clinton, by watching the 3 a.m. phone call, is saying that I feel people don't think I'm fully capable, so I'll make this ad. The ticket to the White House, Weston says, is making voters feel inspired by you and worried about your opponent. If you don't believe that, just ask your subconscious. Randy Kay, CNN, Atlanta. So will your subconscious determine your vote? Come November, let's talk to psychiatrist Gail Saltz about that. So, so Dr. Saltz, I mean, why would people genuinely think that they dislike attack ads? And then you look at these tests, and they show that they're doing something. They're actually working. Exactly. What that demonstrates is there's a big difference between what's on your conscious mind and what's on your unconscious mind. And and the fact is what we saw is that consciously someone would think this is this is bad form or I don't like that this person is attacking someone. What we saw is that unconsciously it's almost like a subliminal message which you know was made legal many many years ago but it's walking up to the line of the subliminal message transporting a message into your mind sort of without you knowing knowing that that's really what's going on and that affects your reasoning ability. 
So it actually impacts you greatly in your decision making. Well, that's what I was going to say. It, it, once those fears are sort of activated, then then how do they play out in the voting booth? Very much so. Because basically, you think about it, in the voting booth, you're going to be even more stressed. Now your vote really matters, and you're not being judged by somebody else. So for instance, outside the voting booth, when we have all these exit polls, right. they're not super accurate because you're thinking, for instance, uh, this person's asking me if I'm racist, and I'm going to say no, because they would judge me very badly if I said yes. And maybe I even believe consciously the answer is no, but unconsciously, if that's lurking anywhere, that will play out in the actual voting booth. And it sounds like, I, I, I guess, even though everybody says they hate these attack la yes. ads and the, and the way, you know, politicians go about it using them, they're here to stay because they work. Well, they do work. And basically what they do is they trip off this part of the brain called the amygdala where fear resides. And it's rather, if you think about it, it's the model of having an anxiety disorder. If you've ever seen anyone who has panic attacks or a phobia, it's not a logical fear. You would be able to say, do you really believe this? No, this doesn't make sense. I know this thing can't hurt me, or I don't really believe that this this candidate is actually dangerous. Consciously, you think that, but when your amygdala is tripped off, the fear is so great and has nothing to do with logic that it actually sort of goes into the part of your brain, the cortex that says, right. you know, what what is my reasoning here? And it affects it deeply, such that it changes your mind. Yeah, shuts down your ability to reason. It's interesting.